What's up guys with season one right around the corner you might be thinking about trying a new class and this barbarian build is awesome. It's fun, it's fast, and it excels at clearing groups of monsters and has surprisingly really good mobility thanks to lunging strike and leap. This build is known for being top tier, one of the best barbarian builds in the game in fact and it's also great for leveling so it's a fantastic pick for starting season one and this build is the whirlwind barbarian. Now before we get into the build don't forget to click that like button, subscribe, and check me out on Twitch to see live gameplay. Let's begin. And starting with the skills first this time. So of course we're going to be going with lunging strike as our basic ability. This is going to cause us to lunge forward and strike the enemy for 33% damage. I love this ability and the reason I love it so much is because it gets your character right into melee range with your target. Like any monster that is like sidestepping, strafing, dodging backwards, you're going to be able to stick on them like no other. Basically keeping you in melee range so I really love this ability in order to keep you right in melee range with your target we're going to upgrade that to enhanced lunging strike so that it deals 30% increased damage and it will heal you for 2% of your maximum life when it damages a healthy enemy and remember healthy is above 85% health and that is what we're going to get and then we're going to be able to unlock our core skill tree of course the namesake of the build is whirlwind barbarian so we are going to get whirlwind which does really great aoe damage we're going to put five points into that we're going to get enhanced whirlwind that says gain one fury each time whirlwind deals direct damage to an enemy or four fury against elite enemies this ability really makes it so that you just never run out of fury you're just constantly whirlwinding i was so surprised when i first played the barbarian at how long i was able to whirlwind for like typically you know from diablo 2 diablo 3 it, you know you had to build up a little bit in order to be able to finally do that but i mean this ability really enables it of course the more enemies you have around you the more your fury is just going to be rock solid you're never going to see it go down if it's just one enemy, of course, you will eventually run out of fury. But the more enemies there are, the less uh, your fury is going to drain thanks to Enhanced Whirlwind. Now, we're also going to get Furious Whirlwind. While using a slashing weapon, Whirlwind also inflicts 40% of its base damage as bleeding damage over 5 seconds. This is actually a key part of the build because we're going to make bleed also slow enemies. And then it's going to allow synergies with Aspect of the Umbral, which gives you resource back whenever you crowd control an enemy. And a slow is a crowd control. So this is actually pivotal pivotal to keeping your fury up as high as you possibly can as you play this build. We're also going to pick up pressure point which says lucky hit. Your core skills have up to a 30% chance to make enemies vulnerable for two seconds. Vulnerable is so powerful in Diablo 4 I just can't get over it. Vulnerability is like it's its own bucket so it's multiplicative. It's just so powerful. I'm still looking for the uh, affix lucky hit. You don't have to go vulnerability <laughs> but uh, that hasn't happened yet but I'll keep trying with that lucky hit chance. But this is so important to get vulnerability into the build. So you're going to put three points into pressure point. Now moving over here, we're going to get rallying cry. It's really just a must in many cases. Below, bellow a rallying cry, increasing your movement speed by plus 30% and resource generation by 40% for six seconds and nearby allies for three seconds. So this is resource generation and movement speed. Both of those are fantastic. We're going to get enhanced rallying cry, which gives you unstoppable while active. I believe that every single build in Diablo 4 should have unstoppable in it, whether it's blood mist as a necromancer whether it's earthen bulwark as a druid whether it's teleport as a sorceress you need something that can make you unstoppable i don't think teleport makes you unstoppable it might be something else but you gotta be able to get out of crowd control especially if you're playing a hardcore character there's so much crowd control in diablo 4 so enhanced rallying cry is just so great and that's going to be your way to get out of crowd control over here we're going to get tactical rallying cry it's going to generate 20 fury and grants you an additional 20 percent resource generation fantastic more resources i love it then finally, we're going to move down here and get War Cry. This is where things start getting juicy. Bellow a mighty War Cry, increasing your damage dealt by 15% for 6 seconds and nearby allies for 3 seconds. So 15% more damage. Heck yeah, I will take that. We're going to make it enhanced to give you Berserking, which is even more damage. And then we're going to get Mighty War Cry, giving you 15% of your base life as Fortify. This is great because we're actually going to start getting some Fortify uh, passive skills a little bit later on in the skill tree. Now, because we have both of those two shouts, we are going to get booming voice. Your shout skill effects durations are increased by 24%, making them last longer. So that means we get longer resource generation, longer movement speed bonus, longer damage bonus. Fantastic talent right there. Lots of synergies. We're also going to get raid leader. Your shouts also heal allies for 3% of their maximum life per second. Nice 3% heal per second is amazing, especially since we're making it last longer. We're going to get leap as well. Leap surprisingly is not just a mobility talent. This surprise 
surprisingly does really good damage, actually. I leap into enemies and I'm like, whoa, I basically just killed everything I landed into. So leap, get five out of five. This actually does really good damage. We're gonna get enhanced leap. So if it doesn't damage enemies, it's cooldown is reduced by four seconds. So if you are just using it to get around, you can use it more quickly. You're like a frog just leaping around. Boom, boom, boom. See, it's only got a, um, what is this? A 13 second cooldown. You can get that down to like nine seconds with uh, enhanced leap. Then power leap, if leap damages at least one enemy gain 40 fury. It's a great way to initiate combat, especially if you're not at full fury. Basically just jump in there. You're gonna have enough fury to start spinning. You're gonna start generating fury. So it's just perfect to leap and then spin and then win. So it's perfect. You're also gonna get aggressive resistance, gain 9% damage reduction while berserking. You will get berserking from Warcry, thanks to enhanced Warcry. So it's gonna give you 9% DR. Prolific fury while berserking, fury generation is increased by 18%. This is massive considering how many ways we're gonna generate fury while we're spinning around. And then battle fervor, when a brawling skill damages at least one enemy, gain berserking for three seconds. This is great. And these are the brawling skills here. Um, and so this is basically leap. Leap is gonna do that damage and it's gonna give you berserking. So you have two sources of berserking now. So we're getting three out of three with all of those berserking passives. Moving over to this part of the skill tree, we're gonna get pit fighter. You deal 9% increased damage to close enemies and gain 6% distant damage reduction. Fantastic, love the more damage we get. And here we have no mercy, three out of three. You gain 9% increased critical strike chance against immobilized, stunned, or slowed enemies. And remember, we're gonna have a slow in this build, right? And that's actually what we're gonna talk about next right here, hamstring. Your bleeding effects slow enemies by 10%. Only need one point in this. We don't need to slow them more than 10% because we just, it's really just binary. Are they slowed or are they not? We just need them to be slowed. So we get the bonuses from No Mercy, but we're also gonna get Aspect of the Umbral and that's gonna give us some great resource generation as well. We're gonna put one point into Thick Skin. Each time you take direct damage, gain 0.4% base life as Fortify. So this is amazing. Now we have consistent Fortify generation and Defensive Stance increases the DR gained while you are fortified, but an additional 6%. Awesome, so now we have some defensive talents. Now when it comes to the ultimate part of the skill tree, we're gonna get three points into Heavy Handed while using two-handed weapons, deal 15% increased critical strike damage. We're gonna be using two-handed weapons for Whirlwind for Lunging Strike. Two-handed weapons are the way to go. So we're gonna get 15% increased critical strike damage with that. And we're gonna get Wrath of the Berserker. Explode into Rage, knocking back surrounding enemies and gaining Berserking and Unstoppable for five seconds. For the next 10 seconds, dealing direct damage with basic skills grants Berserking for five seconds. So this is fantastic. It just gives you so much more Berserking. It's gonna give you all those Berserking bonuses and you're also getting Unstoppable for five seconds, which is awesome. Here it says Prime Wrath of the Berserker. While Wrath of the Berserker is active, gain 20% increased movement speed and increased Fury Regeneration by 30%, which is great. And then finally, Supreme Wrath of the Berserker. While Wrath of the Berserker is active, every 50 Fury you spend increases Berserk's damage by bonus by 25%. So even more damage. And finally, for our key passive, Unconstrained, increase Berserk's maximum duration by five seconds and increase this damage bonus by 25%. So lots of Berserking bonuses. That's gonna make you do tons of damage while you are Berserking. Now this skill tree is fantastic, but now we're gonna have to switch over and talk about the gear skills and legendary aspects. So one of my all-time favorites, Aspect of Disobedience. You can get this from the Halls of the Damned in Kejistan. By far the best defensive aspect in the game. You gain 0.5% increased armor for four seconds when you deal any form of damage stacking up to 50%. So you can get up to 50% increased armor and armor is easily the best defensive stat in Diablo 4 right now. It's going to change in the future. The developers have said it's too strong. They want resistances to be better. So go get go get it while the going's good. Get this aspect of the disobedience. Max out that armor stat because it is so, so good right now. Aspect of the disobedience. You can get this every time. We're also going to get in the boot slot a utility aspect called Relentless Berserker's Aspect. Lucky hit, damaging an enemy with a core skill, has up to a 22% chance to extend the duration of berserking by one second, double this duration if it was a critical strike. Because so much of our build is built into berserking, we absolutely want to extend the duration of berserking as much as we can. And you can get this from completing Hakan's Refuge in Kejistan. Very, very good one for this build. But one that is even more important is Aspect of the Dire Whirlwind. And we're putting this into our two-handed weapon so that it has the double effect. Whirlwind's critical strike chance is increased by 8%. For each second, it is channeled up to 24%. Massive bonus to critical strike chance. And you can see here, it perfectly synergizes here. It says double this duration if it was a critical strike. So we absolutely want as much critical strike as we can with this build. And you can unlock Aspect of the Dire Whirlwind.
Whirlwind by completing Garen Hold in Skazglen. Awesome one. I love how these are only Codex of Power aspects, of course. There's other ones that you can get to finish this build, but again, this is just a leveling build to get you started. In our amulet, we're going to put Edge Master's Aspect. Skills deal up to 20% increased damage based on your available primary resource when cast, receiving the maximum benefit when you're at full primary resource. Now, this is great because you can use Whirlwind when you're at full Fury, and then you never have to recast it. You're just going to do that full 20% increased damage because it says when cast, and you're casting it just once when you're at full resource. So Edge Master's Aspect is so good on anything that is channeled, like Lightning Storm, or in our case, Whirlwind. You can unlock this by completing Old Stones in Skazglen. Let's move on to the ring slot here. I talked a little bit about this briefly in the skill tree. Aspect of the Umbral. Restore one to four of your primary resource when you crowd control an enemy. How are we crowd controlling enemies? Well, our Whirlwind causes bleed, and what we're going to do with that bleed effect is we have Hamstring, and it says our bleed, whenever an, uh, an enemy is bleeding, they are slowed by 10%. When they are slowed, that is a crowd control, and so we are just constantly crowd controlling enemies as we Whirlwind and constantly getting our Fury back. So this is very key for keeping our Fury high. Aspect of Echoing Fury goes into our other ring slot. Oh, by the way, I should mention, you can unlock Aspect of the Umbral by completing Champion's Demise in Dry Steps. I'm sure you all know about Champion's Demise, the S-tier dungeon for leveling. Okay, let's move on to Aspect of Echoing Fury. Your Shout skills generate two to four Fury per second while active. We have two different Shout skills, so it's just perfect to keep that Fury generation super high. Unlocked by completing Sirocco Caverns in Kezhistan. Super. So those are the Codex of Power aspects you can get every single time guaranteed. Let's talk about gems. In the weapon slot, we're going to put Emerald. Deal 12% critical strike damage increase to vulnerable enemies. We have vulnerability from Pressure Point. If you remember from our core skill tree, lucky hit, we can make them vulnerable. And so we're going to increase critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies. Uh, this is a great, great gem. Almost most builds I see socket with the Emerald really is best in slot. When it comes to your armor, we're going to put Sapphires for the DR well fortified. We have a good chunk of fortified generation, whether it's from uh, going berserking, even getting hit, we generate fortify. So we've got some good fortify generation. And then finally in the jewelry, skull, skull, skull. We're always going to get that bonus armor because armor is OP. Well, it is still OP. Season one, it will be. Don't know about season two onward, but for now, put skulls in the jewelry. When it comes to the skills, we kind of went through it with the skill tree, but I do want to mention the technique we're going to go with. We are going to go with the two-handed axe for 15% increased damage to vulnerable enemies. And that's going to be very, very helpful because we're going to make enemies vulnerable. And when they're vulnerable, it's like a new bucket. And so we typically want to just increase that vulnerability bucket. Vulnerability is just so good. In fact, it might be too good. And that is the Barbarian Whirlwind build for leveling. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm really enjoying it myself. If you guys like this video, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more Diablo 4 content. My name's Toy House, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.